Ernesto. Hey, congratulations. Season three of Physical. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How how does it feel uh, re returning uh, to this uh, series as the uh, co um, costume specialist here? Costume designer. You know, I I am like, like I said, I'm always, I always feel very fortunate to even be invited to the party. Like I, I always feel like I can't believe they're paying me to do this work because it's just fun. It's just a great uh, creative outlet. And, you know, you get to work with all these great people. Rose Byrne is fabulous. And director Stephanie Lang is great. <laughs> Annie Weissman is fantastic. I mean, you, you, you know, you can't ask for better. And so there. <laughs> now, now I, I've, I've um, checked out, uh, you know, some, some of your previous work, but uh, you know, the, the eighties, you, you had it spot on because it, this is part of my, my memories too, but what, how did you research and draw your inspirations for the costumes for this series? You know, I really, I, I pulled, you know, Jane Fonda was like, you know, by far the, the most influential um, in my decisions on what uh, Sheila would, would wear, you know, in the aerobics world and in, even in her, in her San Diego world, you know, I thought, I always thought Sheila was a, a, a fish out of water in San Diego. Like she was from San Diego, but she was really in her mind, she wasn't from San Diego. She was from Hollywood or something. She was always a star in her own head, even though everything about her is the antithesis of, of, of that. You know, the way she thinks her inner voice is always putting her down, but she's trying to, you know, she, she wants more. She wants more, more, more. She's an addict, you know. She's, uh, she, we you know we're dealing with issues in the '80s that we're just dealing with now. That people are talking about bulimia and sex addiction and all of that, and we have to kind of deal with that in the show. And we try to convey it in the costumes as well. You know, they every season she kind of changes. You know, uh, mm -hmm. season three she's a, a lot darker. In, in palette and character and, and just her whole, the lines of the clothing and the, the fit of the clothing is very different, so. Do you, do you have to uh, go out and seek out these uh, costumes or do you, or some of them you have to create on your own? Oh, I, I would go, I would say 60, 40. We make a lot, a lot of it. And then a lot of it is, you know, like the fine tailored stuff. We, we are able to find, you know, some that, that work really well and some, you know, it's, it's almost uh, very hard to find. So you make it, or I copy, you know, I really recreate a lot. So, now, of course, you know, physical is not about just exercise wearing leotards. I, ha I have to admit, uh, you've done a very fashionable sense with the, you know, the business wear and the other outfits for, you know, other occasions for the women, especially for uh, Greta. Could you talk about that? Oh, wow, Greta. I'm so glad you noticed that. You know, that character, that the arc that Greta has taken is just incredible from season one to season three. And by season three, I really let out all the stops for her, you know, like the colors and the patterns and the fit. Um, you know, because she she is the size she is, it, it's it's just great to see her. She's she's just great. To, she's like a great muse to have. You know, she looks really great in all the clothes. I gave her a lot of sexual freedom in her clothing from season one. She's very, she's a much more sexual character. <laughs> you know, much more sure of herself. The jewelry, the heels. I, it was just fantastic doing that with her and really showing that uh that empowerment uh for a woman at that time for you know for someone like her it, it was incredible that was a that was a great experience that was most, most excellent and one more thing before i let you go because you know it it seems misleading that the men's fashion is probably the easiest thing to uh to go for in this case because men's fashion typically doesn't change too much, particularly their suits. But we notice a little bit subtle changes, you know, such as the usage of like different color ties or, 
and what my favorite thing is like you know windbreakers and stuff could you talk about that <laughs> you know i we you know the men are it's funny men are kind of secondary in 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 physical the only male that really is uh is pivotal are the two uh bream john bream and rory and you know john is always in a suit so i try to keep him crisp you know he's a mormon i i really keep him i i don't I don't, there's not a lot of challenge there because I don't want to change him from anyone not remembering every time he has these crazy storylines, but I always want to keep the focus on him. People understanding that this is a Mormon that is doing these <laughs> really insane uh, things and it's kind of devious things, but I never want the audience to not forget that he is a Mormon. So I try to keep him pretty much the same. And Rory's character, I just, I really wanted always to people to remember that he's still a hippie. He's not changed. Sheila has moved on. Greta has moved on with their lives and Rory is still fighting that fight, you know, for the environmentalists, the, you know, like, so that, pretty much it really um but we did have a very interesting character in season two which was in in Murray Bartlett uh that was fun and and him I you know that was great that was like motorcycle jackets and a lot of fringe and you know more kind of Richard Simmons type of fun and you know Chippendales <laughs> it, that was a lot of fun but but for our men are are pretty much uh San Diego you know 1980s we don't they're kind of tame compared to the women it's a women's story <laughs> <laughs> it's ernesto. ernesto hey thank you very much uh for this conversation and uh you showed off your uh, creativity most certainly in this series thank you very much thank you thank you so much thank you <laughs>